So I was supposed to create a video about something else. It was about a Linux distribution which had Arch Linux plus Hibernant, very lightweight, very beautiful, and had amazing gaming features, amazing GPU support, like a full-fledged operating system. But then, the worst part of being a Linux user hit me so hard that it has ruined my day, it's already evening out there, and I'm just gonna create a video about releasing all my frustration about Linux in this video. Yep, well, jokes aside, you see, there have been some times when Linux was just so damn awesome. Like, amazing batch life, amazing performance, all my softwares are running amazingly, my favorite game is running awesome, with more FPS than Windows. Everything is just so stable, so awesome. And yeah, somehow, I don't know, have you noticed that sometimes I feel like my display feels brighter and more vibrant and color accurate in Linux as compared to Windows. I don't know if you have noticed it or not, but I should have. It's almost like 20-30%. Like on Linux, I'm usually at 50% brightness. But on Windows, I have to go 100. So you, you can imagine like Linux is twice or maybe like 1.5 to twice better than Windows in terms of display brightness and accuracy. Well, it depends on display to display, laptop to laptop, display drivers to display drivers, GPU to GPU, but still, it's my own experience. And then, my battery life is better on Linux, my performance on every game is better on Linux, and overall productivity is better on Linux. But then, just when I was feeling so good creating a video about an awesome operating system, the worst part of Linux hits me damn hard. So you see, it was just normal. I was just trying to create a bootable USB for Arch Riot distribution. Yep, it's a relatively maybe new distribution, Arch Riot, which is damn good. But when I was creating a bootable USB first, I just used Rufus with ISO, flashed into a USB, tried to boot it up, failed. Then I just retired it with Pelina Edger, failed. Then I went to the website and saw that this suggests to go with Ventoy. So I went. And there at least it passed. But then I had installation issues. So usually when I have to install, you see like, most probably I'm gonna go with live environment in the bootable USB and just show the distribution experience in myself. I'll not install it. But in this operating system, there was no choice. So then I thought, why not I just create a virtual box and install it there. But then... I tried almost 3 to 4 virtual applications like VirtualBox, QEMU, then VMware Player, and then Hyper-V maybe. All of them failed to boot or load this operating system from a CD. Like, it's a menu on virtual machines, but still. I was not able to create a virtual machine of this particular thing. And now this is time for the segue to our sponsor, DataSurf. The smart, local-first browser that is built for creators, dreamers, or anyone who actually thinks on the internet. And everything I researched for the video before the pre-production was done inside DataSurf, just like this. And most browsers track you, but DataSurf doesn't. DataSurf is a local-first browser. So yes, I use DataSurf and it's not just a browser for me. It's a one-stop destination for my workspace. It is like my second brain. And you can check data serve with the link in the description. And let's continue the video. On Linux, it would be so damn easy. Like, just launch GNOME boxes, choose your ISO, and it would go on. But it failed there as well. That's why I went to Windows and then tried four different virtual machine softwares. And it failed every bloody time. Then I, th I thought just, okay, let's say, let me just install this operating system for once on another USB, like I have two USBs. One is a normal flash drive, SanDisk, SanDisk Ultra. Then I have another which is very fast, near to almost like a solid SATA SSD. I might have it here. Yep, there we go, this one. It has a USB-C and normal USB as well. It's awesome. And this is the one which I mostly use for, you know, flashing USB or ISOs. I went to the installation, okay. Then I saw that this USB that this USB is not even listed there as a device to install. I tried using LSBLK on Arch install, which is like, list all the storage devices. It was there, but not in the install of that ISO. Then I tried multiple things, formatting my US this USB multiple times, 
spent almost three hours fixing this particular issue. Then I came up with, why don't I just switch these things? So now I'm going to use this very, very fast, which was supposed to be sort of an SSD where I would install an operating system. Now this is a flash drive and this very slow drive is going to be my, well, the place where I'll install the operating system. This is 64 GBs, this is 128 GBs. It worked, but still I'm going to do this. You know why? Because in Arch Riot was, well, it's just Arch Linux plus that Hyperline setup of Arch Riot. Okay, I'm not criticizing a particular dist distribution. I faced this issue so many times with Arch distributions, Debian distributions, or sometimes, I don't rem remember the name, but maybe it was Vanilla OS or something like that. Like, yeah, it was that. So, I install it, then I try to install it, and then the installation begins. Like, at last, the operating system is being installed on this one. Now, it's going okay. Everything is installing, whatever is on the ISO. Then it starts to grab data or packages from the internet servers or repositories. And yeah, there's another more thing, like, in this particular ISO, there was no location for most countries. Like, there was there were just a bunch of 10 to 15 countries, not all of them as we see on most distributions. So I went on with America because American repositories are okay-ish, like better as compared to other foreign ones like from China or UK. US, US has a stable connection. So I went, I went for that repository, the official ones, and there, first 10 to 15 repositories failed to even load. Then a random repository starts downloading all the packages. I'm like, okay, the download speed is medium. It's okay. Let it download. I wait for almost an hour. Packages are downloading, installing. Then it fails. Why? Well, the installation failed because my internet connection was slow. So I switched from the Wi-Fi to my 5G mobile. And then it's going really fast. Like better than Wi-Fi. I don't know how, but still. It's going good. After half an hour, all the things are almost done. It's just the last package of Linux firmware. It then breaks again. Why? Because the server failed. Then now, I'll say this was the mistake of the server. I say, okay, wait. I'm just going to change the location, reinstall it again. I do it. I tried all the countries which were listed in that particular op ISO. Most of the servers failed. I don't know, maybe it's the reason or maybe it's just my own internet connection right now. The weather's pretty okay. Like, right now, it's pretty okay. But you see, that's not the thing. Then I found out something like... I was trying my best to go through this particular ISO. I opened the files and everything. Then I saw that, you see, the repository is sort of well-maintained and not so good at the same time. Like, that's the truth. It's Arch Linux. So why don't you just use normal Arch packages from the official repository? I don't know why. Then let's say, maybe just go on with Arch user repository, AUR. This gives the support out of the box of Ye or Paru. And it will install everything. You won't have to do much. Just create and install script. That's it. No. Then I thought like, okay, I'm going to install Arch Linux separately. And then the Riot, Arch Riot, which means the desktop of that particular distribution is also available to install separately. I went on for that. And then I found out something. It's the distribution. Like, you see, the desktop installed, everything was good. So there I found out it's not a mistake or it's not the fault of one person. It's just the same as like, you know, Apple devices. Why Apple devices are so optimized and awesome? Yep, they're awesome. Why? Amazing hardware, software and application compatibility and optimization. The hardware is particularly designed to run particular things. The software is designed just for a single set of hardware things. And I don't know why my fan is going loud. That's a Windows 10. But leave that. And all the applications are designed for a particular set of hardware devices. Like this Apple's M1 or M series CPUs. The same series of RAM which are manufactured by Apple. Like everything is designed for Apple hardware there. While on Windows there are so, so much variety. Like Intel's or AMD CPUs. Then we have... AMD or NVIDIA GPUs, then we have so many different types of RAMs, storage devices, and different components of the hardware. And then the operating system is just a single Windows operating system, 
then on Linux we have so many distributions but they aren't made for just general PCs. So it was not a fault, you know, it was not a fault of any developer or any distribution or even Arch. It was the fault of the sync, the optimization. The distribution which I tried, it had not so good optimization like it was trying to install Arch Linux, all the packages of Arch, then all the packages of that particular desktop and then all the packages of what it felt was right. And all of those packages were having dependency issues, some overlapping. I saw with my own eyes, it was installing open source NVIDIA drivers. Then I thought, okay, I'm going to later reinstall a proper H1. Then in the same time, in the same installation, after some time when the Arch was installed and the desktop was installing, it is now installing NVIDIA's proper H drivers as well. I thought maybe it is something like it might reinstall everything and it did. Okay, assigned. Then I saw that it's reinstalling all the Linux kernel packages, AMD CPUs packages and all the other packages again. And some of the packages were this or that. All of them are in conflict with each other and there's so much mess in the ISO. It was just so frustrating and I ended up almost like wasting the whole day. Right now it is... 4.30, I know, like, yeah, 4.30. 4.30 in the evening. I've been here since 12. Maybe 10 or 12. <sighs> These are the times I just feel like just turn all the devices off, go to my bed and sleep in peace because I just went through hell. You see, I'm not bothered by any kernel issues, driver issues, codec issues or any issues as long as I have my operating system in camp. Like if I've installed Fedora or Manjaro with GNOME desktop environment, everything should be fine in the operating system. It's fine that my Devin Resolve is having issues with NVIDIA drivers. I'm going to fix that. I can easily fix that because that's possible. But what if your whole operating system is in fault with itself? And you see, there's one more thing. I was trying to install operating system here and somehow it broke my USB. I don't know how. I'm going to just install gparted and try to fix this thing but right now it is broken i don't know how well that's the thing it's just sometimes frustration of linux goes beyond everything you see windows does have issues a lot of them but they're all fixable we can fix them if we put effort and that same is applied to linux and uh, it's even better for linux because we learn things while fixing things but what if you're trying to fix an issue on the operating system and now you find out that the whole issue is the operating system itself. It's just so frustrating. And then there's one issue I've been wondering and I cannot find a particular solution for that. If you guys know, let me know in the comments because you see, in the past and right now, I've been trying to completely switch all my workspace, all my workflow into Linux, everything. What I'm going to do? I'm just going to create videos. That means I'm going to need to have the Wing Studios on Studio, even on the Studio version. I find that I don't have AAC audio codec support. I'm ready to, well, convert each video again and again. It's okay for me. But you see, whenever I'm doing a little heavy editing, like I'm going a little deep, a little quality. I have multiple nodes, multiple layers. The editing is a little heavy. Somehow my preview and my output becomes flickery. Like all the things I've done, it becomes flickering every second. It's like the whole, op it's like an earthquake inside a video. And whenever I just, you know, create a null basic video, it's perfectly fine, really fast. But whenever I'm just doing a little more heavy editing, it's still fast. But it's like an earthquake inside, inside this video. Every effect, every transition, everything is just so flickery. It's all flickering. And then recently, a lot of games, for example, in... My recent video, I showed how you can play Farlight Lady Force, New Global launched the new version without any problems on Linux. All you had to do is just install Proton's proper compatibility layer, which is designed particularly for the game. And it worked well, like us getting even better FPS than my Windows. And yeah, by the way, that reminds me. So you see, I just found out that I was using Windows to play some games, PUBG and Fortnite, but leaving that. You see, I've been having a lot of throttle issues. Like, somehow my laptop would go 95 degrees. Literally. Can you imagine? You cannot, if you touch 95 degrees CPU or, you know, my laptop's 
heat sink, it feels so damn hot. It's like I'm touching fire. But that, that you know, that much temperature was messing up with my FPS. I would get 30 seconds of everything throttling. My FPS from 120 goes all the way down to just 10 to 20 for a few seconds and then come back and this will happen in a cycle which won't stop. I found out that there were some driver issues with Windows on AMD CPUs. You see, have you heard that there were recent rise and burnout issues where people's, you know, PCs were actually burning. The CPUs would go all out and some actually blasted, some actually just melted away because AMD was having temperature issues. Well, AMD is known to have those issues, but you see, the problem was AMD has something called Turbo Boost. In this one, the TGP goes all the way up over the normal limits. The temperature would rise from normal 80 degrees to 100 or maybe more degrees. That's very bad. Like, it's actually the boiling temperature of water. Just imagine how long a metal heat sink and the CPU would be able to survive. So, it just does the throttle work and my CPU almost burned. Like, I thought it would, it actually smelled, sometimes the smell was like something's burning. Yep, it was true. So, I found out that it was the TGP issues, the overboost issues and I had to undervolt my CPU. I actually decreased the TGP of my short boost duration and long boost duration of AMD to 20. Like, my TGP of my CPU is right now 20. But that gives me more FPS as compared to others. Well, I never had this issue with Linux, but somehow I faced it just now. And my temperatures are just awesome. And the software I used was the Ryzen Control. It's actually also available on Linux. And when I switch to Linux completely, I'm going to use it as well. But to be honest, I never faced any issues in Linux as compared to performance. Once you have a full-fledged Linux setup, it's going to be really, you know, really awesome. But to reach that perfect state, it's going to be hell. Well, yeah, I believe that's all the frustration I have with Linux. What else I can say to grab all my anger out in the video? Well, what can I say? Well, no Adobe software support, maybe. Like, I don't have Photoshop on there. But yeah, I usually use Canva for my thumbnails, mostly. Then let's say if I have to do some work with Photoshop files, then I can use Photopia. Then there's this web version of Photoshop which was released recently. Or I can just learn GIMP. Maybe it feels a little off, but okay, I can. And yeah, there are some games which are not supported on Linux. And yeah, by the way, I, I've been using Omachi recently and it's just awesome. It's awesome. The only problem I face, like earlier I thought it was an advantage, but now I don't feel like that. So the only problem is the display scaling. It's twice. For all the displays default right from the installation. I tried to disable it but I could not. Any help with configuring Hyperland config files? Let me know in the comments because that's the only issue I have. And to be honest, I can fix it if I just go all in into terminal. On KDR GNOME, we just had to go to the settings and decrease the scaling or remove the fraction scaling. But yeah, it's that if that's that. And yeah, I believe I'm done. Yep. That was all the frustration I had for losing my whole day. Like, I was so motivated to create a video in the morning. And the whole mood and everything got destroyed as the evening came. It is evening. And now it, the tea time is coming. So, yeah, I'm just going to... Well, I'm going to make this video as raw as possible. Like, you see, I, I was actually recording when I was trying this Arch Riot distribution. And I actually smashed my table multiple times out of frustration. I stood from my chair so hard that sometimes my chair made an amazing sound. It was pure anger. Frustration to be honest. Well, anyway, if you have watched the video till now, you would have already seen it. Yep, maybe. And yeah, with that being said, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Well, how can you? It was all pure chaos and frustration of my mind. But yeah, that's it. Sometimes we have to be like that, you know. And I'll meet you next video. And I have a bunch of ideas which I would like you to go through. Like there are amazing ideas I have for creating videos about Linux. Let me know if you have any more. Like if you have any idea, just comment me down below. If the video idea is good, most probably you're going to get a video in a few days. I promise. If I like that idea. And yeah, 
I'm going to meet you in the next video. Till then, I'm home signing out.